so hello everybody uh, first of all thank you to the organizers for uh, allowing me to give this talk and uh, this talk that i'll be giving uh, will be uh, will be given from the experimental point of view so i'll be talking about uh, what are the uh, what is the current status of, of experimental searches uh, for uh, primordial black hole evaporation using uh, very high energy gamma ray facilities so first of all uh, first of all, uh, some uh, small introduction. So, from the experimental point of view, if you've been see, uh, you've been seeing this week, uh, there are several techniques that try to measure the signature of uh, primordial black holes. So, uh, you can have uh, well, you can have different. Uh, you can try to search for different signatures. So, what I'll be talking about here is uh, the search for evaporation of these uh, of these black holes at. Uh, at uh, the final stages of their lives. So the evaporation of these primordial black holes right now. And uh, <clears throat> well, as, as we know, the, uh, the evaporation of a black hole is uh, pretty well known. And in principle, at the end of their life, they should uh, emit a flash of, uh, of gamma rays that should be detectable by the current generation of uh, very high energy gamma ray facilities. So uh, now let me talk uh, a little bit about the limits for the evaporation uh, right now. So as I said, we are we are searching for uh, for black holes that are evaporating right now. If they are evaporating right now, they cannot uh, have form in a gravitational collapse, and uh, they can only be of a primordial origin. Uh, this uh, bl this uh, primordial black hole need to have a mass of uh, uh, of an original mass of. 10 to the 14 grams in order to be evaporating uh, right now and, uh, and and there are actually pretty constraining limits uh, uh, at, uh, the, mm, mm, using different scales let's say so for example for large scale cosmological scales we have uh, constraints from the extra galactic uh, gamma ray background of uh, this uh, 10 to the minus 16 uh, PVH per cubic parsec per year. Then, if we if we come closer, there are uh, there are also limits on galactic scales and on kiloparsec scales, that, and these limits are pretty constrained. So, what uh, what uh, can we do better with uh, these uh, very high energy gamma ray facilities? Well, the, the thing that we try to focus is on primordial black holes that are that are evaporating pretty close by that uh, are clustering close to the Earth on parsec scales. Remember, one parsec is around three light years. And <clears throat> that, are, mm, that are evaporating at the moment and are happening serendipitously in the field of view of our instruments. So, so first of all, let, let me remark, we focus on uh, events that are happening very nearby at parsec distances, and then uh, we have two types of uh, detectors that uh, that are searching for these events. First of all, wide field of view detectors that are covering a very large volume because of their large field of view. They are they are usually uh, using techniques as a, a particle detection. I will talk a, a little bit uh, about it now. And then uh, also imaging atmospheric channel of telescopes that are pointing instrument with small field of view but have a much better sensitivity. So now very quickly, so for uh, gamma ray astronomy, there are there are several kind of detectors. As I said, there are two there are two main types. First of all, the pointing instrument that have excellent angular resolution and a small field of view and very good sensitivity. And then the wide field of view instrument that have a moderate angular resolution, but have a wide field of view and they can operate uh, all the time. So you have a larger integration time as well. For the evaporation models, we usually use this uh, model by Ukwata et al. for the final uh, stages of the of the lives of uh, these primordial black holes, in which uh, in the end they produce uh, they, they produce uh, a pi zero decay that uh, decays into into photons, producing this spectrum depending on the time that you integrate in the final stages of the life of this uh, PBH. And uh, what is important for us is uh, are two things. First of all, is the maximum reach. How far how far away are we be able to see? Because that will limit the volume that uh, we will be able to cover. And then 
<clears throat> the second one is the, the absolute uh, limit that you are able to put. So first of all, it is important that roughly the, the one parsec distance because uh, the closest stars that uh, we know of uh, are located uh, at uh, distances of roughly one parsec. So if there is a clustering of PBH near the earth, then uh, it, would, it wouldn't be crazy to think that uh, they would be clustering close to the, nearby, uh, the nearest by stars that uh, we have uh, here near the Earth. So here in this plot, I, I, have, I, I include just yes, a, a rough approach of what, uh, uh, of what would be the maximum reach of, of uh, imaging atmospheric chunk of telescopes. Uh, sorry, here the, the labels are, are changed. So the maximum reach of uh, uh, of IACTs should be larger than the, the one of wide field of view detectors. Uh, so here, yes, swap the, uh, the, the labels. Uh, I'll change that uh, afterwards. And, uh, <clears throat> and afterwards, uh, here the labels are, are swapped again. I'm sorry. Uh, with, uh, with this uh, maximum reach, you get uh, you uh, you calculate what is the volume covered by uh, by the detector that is uh, dependent on the, of the field of view. As I told you before, the field of view of a wide field of view instrument is much larger than the one of ICTs, so you are able to establish much better limits with uh, this uh, wide field of view instrument. As I, uh, so again, here this uh, this is another plot of uh, of a rough, rough approach of what you are able to see. Uh, comparing an IACT with a wide field of view detector. And as I said, the, the limits that we are able to put here are not competitive at, uh, uh, at cosmological distances, but uh, what we are trying to search is not, uh, not for the better limits, but we are trying to detect uh, an event that is happening right now here uh, close by to the Earth. So uh, for that, we, we treat uh, the, uh, the data that we take uh, using uh, establishing these uh, limits using Poisson fluctuations. But when we search for, for events, we, uh, we take into account the number of trials and so on and so forth in order to, uh, to take into account all the statistics and uh, do not claim a spurious signal that, uh, can, be, um, uh, that can, can be generated simply by the number of trials that we are uh, that we are generating. So, <clears throat> sorry, it wasn't moving. Uh, so uh, now here you have the current limits established by dip different type of detectors by imaging atmospheric chunk of telescopes as uh, HES and Veritas and wide field view instrument as uh, Milagro, Hawk, and so on. Uh, so you can see the best uh, limits, as I told you before, are at the moment established by by Hawk, that is a wide field of view detector, the, and this is for the current generation of instruments. But the next one, with the next one, we are expecting to improve this by one order of magnitude, and we are also we are also expecting to improve the maximum reach of the detectors. So for for this uh, for the future for the uh, for the next generation of instruments, so for uh, I just I will just mention here very quickly we have. Uh, a couple of uh, observatories. One if, uh, is Lasso in China that is uh, starting operating, uh, op operation with, uh, uh, with a small part of the detector and will be completed uh, in the next uh, few years. And uh, it, it has actually uh, a sensitivity that will be roughly one order of magnitude better than the current generation of instrument, maybe a bit less. And uh, Suigo uh, will be uh, will be also a wet field view uh, experiment that will be located in the southern hemisphere. For the imaging atmospheric chunk of telescopes, the, there are, uh, as I showed you before, there are three facilities right now in the world, but uh, currently we are working together uh, building the chunk of telescope array uh, that will, be, uh, will host more than 100 uh, uh, imaging atmospheric chunk of telescopes. And in it, it is expected also to improve the sensitivity roughly one order of magnitude with respect to the current uh, um, instruments that are observing the sky using the same technique. So <clears throat> just- uh, Sorry, you have two more minutes. Sorry? Okay. Yeah, two minutes, yeah. You said two minutes. Okay. Two to three, I mean, yeah, yeah fine. Yeah, it's okay. So, yeah. So I'm just finishing. So for the projection for the, for the optimistic reach, 
of, uh, of and uh, also for the limits of uh, that we will be able to reach with these uh, detectors. So over here, you have uh, a plot of in electrocentric coordinates with uh, all the stars that uh, we have in our neighborhood. And uh, for, uh, as I said, uh, optimistically, you can you, you can say that uh, you can reach a, a few parsec with uh, with uh, for example an, an IECT uh, array. And, and uh, over there, you see that uh, we would, uh, if, uh, if this is true, we would be able to cover all this, uh, the, all the volume of uh, in which you can see all these stars that are uh, that are the drawn over there in that plot. So as, as you can see, if uh, if we are able to have a, have a reach of larger than one parsec, we will be able to cover many stars around and then as i said if there is uh, some uh, pbh clustering near the earth in principle it is uh, it is reasonable to think that it it should be in the in this region and then for the limits uh, you can see a comparison of what uh, what we have right now uh, with hawk and the limits that will be improved by one order of magnitude or even more with uh, the next generation of experiments so Finishing already, so for uh, for uh, the study of uh, primordial black hole evaporation with a very high energy gamma ray uh, experiments, we have uh, the current limits uh, of uh, the order of uh, 10 to the 3 bars per year per cubic parsec, and we're expecting to improve that uh, by one order of magnitude with the next generation of experiments. The maximum the reach is uh, right now of the order of less than one parsec, but uh, we're expecting to improve that with the next generation as well. And uh, <clears throat> let's hope that uh, we, we get uh, one interesting event because uh, like that, we can also study it in other wavelengths and try to figure out whether, whether this was coming from a PBH uh, or not. And that's it, thank you. Okay, so thank you very much for finishing in time. Uh, I find one question in the chat box by Piyush Pani Vatacharya. Uh, yeah, another question. So Piyush, uh, could you please uh, unmute yourself and ask the question? Uh, sure. I think you can read it Piyush. Okay, that, that's good, that's good, no problem. So there is a question by Piyush Pani Vatacharya and he asks, what is the maximum gamma ray energy that can be emitted? The maximum gamma energy that can be emitted in this, uh, according to this pi zero, uh, so uh, pi zero decay in this, uh, uh, I think it is, uh, it is something called uh, like the pion, uh, pion, uh, photo pion model or something like this, is uh, of the order of uh, 100 TV or more. You can see it here in this, uh, in this plot. Okay, that's great. And there is a related question from Raghu. Uh, he asks, uh, what is the density of PBH you are assuming? Related to the previous question. What is the uh, density? Sorry? Density of PBH you are assuming, yeah. What is the density of the primordial black holes you are assuming? The density. Uh, you yeah, mean yeah the, exactly. You mean the mass of the primordial black hole that or... So uh, the, this was related to the previous question. I think, uh, I mean, Raghu, could you clarify? Yeah, just the, um, yeah. the number density of primordial black holes that you are assuming. Are you okay. saying that if the energy density in black holes is comparable to critical density or, I mean, or to the dark matter density, then it gives you a oh, certain number density. Okay. In so, so you you want to compare it to the dark matter okay. density. So I, I don't have, uh, so we usually don't, uh, don't plot it like this because compare to the to the limits that you are able to establish with uh, with the extragalactic gamma ray background light, it is several orders of magnitude above. Okay, so I don't I don't remember it is uh, at uh, yeah I, I I need to check, but uh, the thing is that we we don't want to uh, we don't want to plot it in in that way because uh, then uh, you you immediately think that uh, it doesn't make any sense to establish this limit at cosmological scales. To compare uh, to compare it with uh, uh, the dark matter density because uh, because we we don't uh, we are not competitive in that uh, in that sense with the limits that you are able to establish with extragalactic gamma ray background are much more constraining but uh, what we so 
the, what we are focusing, as I said, is trying to really detect one uh, of these events um, in the uh, nearby the Earth. I see. Thanks.